guys! This is your Tita in China and today we're back with a new skincare video. Today we're going to talk about skin lightening, the popular products on the market that are used for skin lightening, and the disadvantages or the possible side effects of skin lightening. So before we move on with the video, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification so that you will know the next time your Tita in China will have a new video. So without further ado, let's talk about skin lightening. Whether we want to admit it or not, skin lightening is very popular in the Philippines because we think that white is beautiful. And this is not something that is unique to the Philippines because a lot of other countries in the world actually consider a lighter complexion to be more beautiful. This has a lot to do with the idea that if you're lighter skinned, you have a higher status. You don't need to go outside, you don't need to work the fields, and you probably have servants to do things for you. And it is also generally considered that if you have darker skin, then you're probably of a lower social status because you always need to be outside and working the fields, for example. Obviously, this kind of thinking is very outdated and kind of useless, but we also need to understand that centuries of this kind of mindset is difficult to undo. I am obviously not a light-skinned person, and growing up, I would always hear my mom tell me, Wag kang maglaro sa labas pag may araw pa! Mamaya ka na maglaro! Ang itim-itim mo na! And of course, at school, people would call me baluga, negra, ungoy, which I feel was completely unfair and very damaging to my self-esteem. Pero syempre, who are we going to blame anyway, di ba? Even if the parents of my bullies didn't actually teach them to use those kinds of words on other people, ridiculing darker-skinned people, looking down on darker-skinned people is something that we see everywhere in media, even in cartoons. So yeah, I don't blame you if you want to get fairer skin. Because of my experiences growing up, I of course wanted to get lighter. I have tried so many lightening products and some of them work, but a lot of them are just fluff. I think in the Philippines and pretty much the rest of Asia, the gold standard for whitening is glutathione. And it is a very powerful antioxidant that our body already produces. So the five most popular and effective whitening ingredients in the market include glutathione, kojic acid, tranexamic acid, hydropinone, and arbutin. So bago natin maintindihan kung paano nag-work yung mga whitening ingredients na yan, kailangan muna natin intindihin kung paano ba tayo umiitim. And I say umiitim because we cannot actually change how fast we are at the baseline. Lahat tayo meron tayong baseline. And this is the skin tone that we have genetically. So kung tatanggalin natin yung mga sun damage, yung hyperpigmentation, yun yung baseline ng skin natin. Ibig sabihin, if you're darker skin, if you're morena, hindi ka magiging kasing puti ng isang koreana. It's physically impossible. Your genetics will not allow for it. So ano ba yung baseline natin? Tingnan nyo yung kulay ng katawan ninyo. A part of your body that doesn't actually get exposed to the sun. Or a part of your body that does not have hyperpigmentation. And hyperpigmentation includes melasma, freckles, sunspots, or even acne scars. So check what your baseline skin tone is kasi yun na yung pinaka-maximum na pwede ninyong ikapute. Two main reasons why we get darker is sun exposure and inflammation. Because the skin reacts to the sun by protecting us from it. And the way our skin protects us from the sun is by producing more pigment or melanin which makes our skin darker. Because darker skin absorbs less light. So the production of skin pigment which is called melanin is actually controlled by an enzyme called tyrosinase. And this is how a lot of whitening agents work. For example, ingredients like glutathione and arbutin both disrupt how tyrosinase works. So, iniinterrupt nila yung trabaho ng tyrosinase. And without tyrosinase, hindi pwede magproduce ng melanin yung katawan natin, which prevents the skin from getting darker. Kojic acid also does the same thing. Hydroquinone is also the same. There are other reasons why we get hyperpigmentation. And for some women, they experience hyperpigmentation in the form of melasma, especially when they get pregnant. However, whether it is sun exposure, inflammation due to acne, or hormonal changes during pregnancy, the treatment for hyperpigmentation remains the same. So the first four ingredients I'm going to talk about are glutathione, kojic acid, hydroquinone, and arbutin. As I've said, yung apat na ingredients na yan all work by inhibiting tyrosinase, which is the enzyme that controls the production of melanin. So glutathione is a powerful antioxidant and it is already found in our bodies. So since antioxidant siya, it helps fight against oxidative stress. Oxidative stress happens when there is more free radicals in your body than antioxidants. And we don't like free radicals 
cells because they damage your cells, including your skin cells. So oxidative stress on the skin leads to premature aging and wrinkles, fine lines, and the depletion of collagen. Glutathione as an antioxidant helps with all of those issues. But one unique thing about glutathione is that it also inhibits or interrupts the production of tyrosinase. There is this study that shows a lightening effect on the skin of people who have orally taken glutathione. But of course, things are always more effective when it is used intravenously. And that is why you will be able to see a faster whitening effect if you take intravenous glutathione. So let's talk about hydroquinone. Like I've said, glutathione has an antioxidant effect on top of it being able to inhibit tyrosinase. Hydroquinone, on the other hand, does not do anything else but inhibit tyrosinase. So, wala siyang antioxidant effect, wala siyang ibang ginagawa to your skin except to disrupt kung paano nagtatrabaho yung tyrosinase. In the Philippines, I think we still have products that contain hydroquinone but I think this is prescription only. But you should also note that hydroquinone is a very controversial skincare ingredient. And the long-term use of hydroquinone can actually lead to a skin disorder that is quite disfiguring called exogenous ochronosis. So please be very careful and consult a doctor before starting hydroquinone. The next ingredient, our butin, is like a cousin to hydroquinone because our butin works by slowly releasing hydroquinone into your skin. And because of that, our butin is a much milder and much gentler version of hydroquinone. The next ingredient is tranexamic acid and it is often touted as the next big thing in skincare, especially in whitening. But I'm often suspicious about the words up and coming because it is often just code for we don't have evidence for it yet. The studies related to the effectiveness of tranexamic acid doesn't actually tell us how tranexamic acid works. Mostly, these studies just show that tranexamic acid does work for people with hyperpigmentation and that the effect of tranexamic acid when applied to the skin is similar to that of hydroquinone. And on top of that, konti pa lang yung mga studies that are done on tranexamic acid. So if you want to be really evidence-based or science-based with your skincare, or you simply have sensitive skin, then tranexamic acid might not be something you want to try. But we can't just talk about the benefits of lightening your skin without talking about the disadvantages. And the side effects of trying out new products, especially products that have active ingredients, include burning, itching, irritation, dryness and flaking, and even allergic reactions. And we're not just talking about the whitening ingredients themselves, we're talking about how it is formulated. So I see a lot of kojic acid or tranexamic acid soaps, as in hard soaps. And often these products are very drying to the skin. It compromises your skin barrier, it can cause irritation, drying, and redness. And it is just generally not worth it. Also remember that health authorities in the Philippines have also warned against the use of glutathione. And that's because there's so many damn mga glutathione products in the market, and with varying price points. Hindi talaga natin alam kung ano ba talaga yung quality ng mga products na yon. We never know how sterile the environment is when making those products, especially yung mga pills or tablets. And we also don't know, maybe they put fillers that might not be healthy for you. And as I've said earlier, if you're going to try intravenous glutathione, there are a lot of things that can happen. First of all, you can get an allergic reaction from the formula or from the glutathione itself. And if these allergic reactions happen in places like beauty salons where you might not have a medical professional overseeing the procedure, you might not be able to get the help that you need. And things can get really, really bad. On top of that, if the tools that are being used and the surroundings are not clean, you can get an infection. Also remember, whether you're taking glutathione intravenously or orally, the effect is not going to last forever. And it's the same thing whatever whitening product you want to use. Even if you're using these whitening ingredients, if you keep on exposing your to the sun without SPF, or if you don't treat your acne properly, then it's just going to be the same. Simply because we can't fight against our genes. This is something I thought about after I realized that I am spending so much money in making my skin look whiter, when what I should be really focusing on is taking care of my skin. Having a solid skincare routine, taking care of the individual problems of my skin, and just generally being kinder to myself. I have no way of fighting my genes, no one has a way of fighting their genes, but the point is, why do I want to fight against my genes? What makes dark skin so ugly? What makes dark skin so undesirable? 
the end of the day, I realized that there's so much more about me and about you than just your skin color. So instead of focusing on whitening your skin, focus on taking care of your skin. That means using SPF religiously and reapplying religiously. Or adding things like retinols or chemical exfoliants into your skincare routine. Because while these products don't make your skin look whiter, they make your skin look bouncier, supple, plump, and young looking. It can also help against things like acne. The focus must always be on skin health rather than the color of it. So for this video, I don't have any product recommendations because I don't recommend whitening to anyone. I mean, I don't want you to feel bad if you do want to have lighter skin because that's your own personal choice. But I hope that instead of using or on top of using whitening products, that you would also have a solid skincare routine. A good skincare routine that keeps your skin healthy and protected from the sun and also rejuvenates it and keeps you young looking. So if you want to take better care of your skin or if you want to be more informed in your skincare choices or if you need help in building a solid skincare routine i'm going to link some of my previous videos up here so that's it guys that's our video for today i hope that you found this helpful if you did please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends who are skincare buffs or if you have any comments or questions about skin lightening or anything i said in the video please comment down below thank you for watching guys see you next time bye